Good afternoon and welcome to the shared worship service between St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Berea and Rockport United Methodist Church in Rocky River. My name is Reverend Lauren Radzik. Uh, and I'm Father Dave Radzik. And we are pleased to be worshiping with you this afternoon on this holy, holy day as we remember Monday, Thursday and Christ's Last Supper with his disciples. Friends, we invite you to join <laughs> us in our call to worship by reflecting on this setting of Psalm 116, verses 10 through 17, composed by Kira Seaton, the Minister of Music at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. The words can be found in your bulletins, which are available on your church website, as well as opportunities to give and find alternative practices for this Holy Week. We invite you to be in reflection and in prayer as we hear the words of this psalm. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Will you join us in singing uh, the words of hymn 289, Ah, Holy Jesus. Thank you. 
the words of St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing together now the words of hymn 286, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Yeah. 
Passion, but find the deadly pain. Lord, here I fall, my Savior. Monday, Thursday, I have the privilege of talking about Holy Week once again with our children. And we're going to do so by taking a look at some of the resources that we have available. We have sent out, and you have access on your church websites, to our Holy Week at Home Guide, and we hope that you are using those resources. Every day there's a scripture to read, an opportunity to reflect on that scripture, something to pray, and then something to do as we are worshiping at home this season. I know for us, it's really difficult not to be with all of you in person during this Holy Week. There are things that we can't do in an online worship service that we would be doing if we were gathered in person in our churches. And that makes us feel a whole bunch of ways. And so I thought that for our Monday, Thursday children's lesson, we would read this book called Holy Week, an emotions primer, <laughs> and it's written by Daniel Hitchin, and the art, which is gorgeous in this book, is by Jessica Blanchard. And I thought that as we read this book, we can think about all the things that we are feeling, all of the things that Holy Week walks with us through, all of the things that we feel when we journey with Jesus to the cross, and all of the things that we're feeling when we're not worshiping together. Excited. When Jesus entered Jerusalem for the Passover feast, a crowd gathered to see him, waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> angry. Can you make an angry face? Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out the merchants. He turned over their tables, angry because they made God's house a den of robbers. When the temple was clean, Jesus stayed there, healing and teaching. <laughs> loved. What does it feel like when you feel loved? Before the Passover feast, Jesus showed the disciples how much he loved them. He washed their feet saying, I did this as an example for you. So you should serve each other just as I have served you. And sometimes when we gather for worship on Monday, Thursday, we wash each other's feet. Thankful. Can you think of something right now that you're thankful for? Yeah, we're thankful for <laughs> Sophia. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, so that their sins will be forgiven. Overwhelmed. Sometimes I feel that way. I, in fact, I feel that way a little bit right now. <laughs> then Jesus went to pray, telling his disciples, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow. He fell down and prayed, Abba, Father, take this cup from me, yet not what I will, 
but what you will. Do you pray to God when you're overwhelmed? The next emotion is frustrated. <laughs> Jesus was arrested and brought to Pilate, but Pilate found him innocent and wanted to release him. Still, the people wanted Jesus to die. Frustrated, Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt. But the people again demanded Jesus should be crucified. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. Scared. Are you feeling scared right now when we're staying at home and not able to do the things we want? Are we feeling scared about a virus or thinking that we might get sick? God is always there for us when we're scared. Jesus was crucified. The earth shook when he died and the soldiers who were guarding Jesus were terrified, exclaiming, surely he was the son of God. Sad. Can you make a sad face? <laughs> Many people were sad when Jesus died. They laid his body in a tomb and rolled a great stone to the entrance. He was pierced for our transgressions, and by his wounds we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Surprised. On the third day, women went to Jesus' tomb, where an angel descended and said, I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. The end. Friends, this Holy Week Primer has been one of the books that we have been reading in our house, but we suspect that there are some books that you have been reading in your house. And we suspect that there are some conversations that you're having with your families. There are some things that you feel might have, we might have even named those in our children's message today. Sometimes we're feeling surprised or overwhelmed or excited or sad. Sometimes we feel frustrated that we can't do all the things that we usually do. Whatever it is that you're feeling as we gather for worship today, know that God is with you in the midst of it. Know that Jesus felt all of those things in his lifetime, that his disciples who gathered around the table on the very first Monday Thursday gathered with him feeling a whole mixture of things. And so, friends, know that God is with you this day. Even while, when we are apart, even while we can't worship together in the same place or when we're not participating in the same kind of worship that we are, if we were together, God is still with us. And God can hold us and all of the emotions and all of the things that we feel as we remember this holy day together. Let's pray or repeat after me prayer. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. And for taking good care of us. And for taking good care of us. No matter what. No matter what. Help us to remember. Help us to remember. You are always with us. You are always with us. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear now our gospel lesson from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17 and 31b through 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table he took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. He poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He <clears throat> came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, what? Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. 
Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table and said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do also as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to, to God. God. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This evening, uh, Monday, Thursday, um, is an evening that we, we celebrate um, and remember Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. Um, and during the course of this service, um, even in our, our brief uh, service that we're providing to you online, there are two major themes. Um, the first is the institution of the Lord's Supper, the Holy Eucharist, Holy Communion, the Mass, if you will. And the second is Jesus' command um, to wash each other's feet as a sign of mutual love and care for one another. Um, both of these uh, themes are tied together um, because um, both of these passages, the first from 1 Corinthians and the second from the Gospel of John, are about this concept of mutual love and hospitality and care for one another. Um, as Christians, we believe that through Jesus' death and his resurrection, we have been welcomed back into the family of God from that home um, that we were estranged. God welcomes us back. Um, Jesus, in the Gospel of uh, John, uh, symbolizes that welcoming back by stooping as a servant to wash the feet of the disciples. Um, likewise, uh, Jesus' self-offering, which is symbolized in Holy Communion, uh, reminds us of God's definitive act of hospitality, uh, which he offers us through the cross. Um, Both of these things are at the heart of the Christian vocation. God has welcomed us, and so as Christians, we are called to welcome each other. And that's hard, um, because we all come from different um, places and backgrounds, and sometimes it's hard to, to welcome one another. Um, but Jesus calls us to, to lay aside all of our preconceptions and notions, and to welcome each other, to love each other in a mutual love and affection. Um, in the Greek, they call that economia. Um, 
which means household, the household of God. And so that's the, the basic Christian ethic. Um, as is probably obvious to you, um, there will be no foot washing in this service, and there will be no sharing of the Holy Eucharist, these symbols that are most associated with Monday Thursday. And, and I don't know about you, but um, that's really, uh, really difficult for me. Um, these are things that are, are so much a part of the celebration of Monday Thursday that they seem almost inseparable. Um, but here we are in our individual homes, um, joined together as one body in Christ. And let us, through our prayer and through our telephone calls and our love of one another, show that sign of, of mutual affection and love, of hospitality for one another. Um, we can do that during this time. Um, and another way that we can do it is in kind of a, an ironic way, is to keep away from one another. We care for each other in this time of pandemic um, by this social distancing, by remaining in our homes, by not congregating um, to keep others from, from getting sick um, and from keeping ourselves healthy as well. And so the best thing that we can do today is to care for each other um, from afar, with our prayers, our telephone calls, our notes, our messages on, on, on Facebook and things like that. Um, and so um, this evening or today, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite poems, poets um, by one of my favorite, my favorite poems from one of my favorite poets. Oh my goodness, strike that, reverse it. Um, so my, my St. Thomas folks will probably have heard this before and Maybe we'll be nauseated because they've heard it so many times, but maybe, maybe it will be new to some, some other folks. Um, the, poet, the poem is called Love, um, and it speaks of this theme of mutual hospitality. And it's by George Herbert, um, who was a, a great poet, um, but also a, a priest of the Church of England. So um, that makes me very happy. Um, he writes and indeed prays. Let me see if I can get into the right meter here. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul, soul drew back, guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack from my first entrance in, drew nearer to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful, ah, my dear, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, who made the eyes but I. Truth, Lord, but I have marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. And know you not, says love, who bore the blame. My dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So I did sit and eat. And so let us bid loves welcome and sit at love's table this night, remembering God's love for us and our love for one another. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we invite you to join in the words that Jesus talks to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Friends, God's love bids us welcome, and what wondrous love it is. So let us sing together the hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? Love is this that caused all 